Hello everyone and welcome to the String I.O. module lecture. So this is going to be a very brief lecture on what the String I.O. module actually does. And then I'll let you go ahead and explore the documentation in Jupyter Notebook if you feel the need to ever use String I.O. in your code. Um, String I.O. is sometimes confusing to beginners, but the best way to think about it is String I.O. module basically implements an in-memory file-like object. And I'm actually not going to do any live code, I'm just going to walk through the Jupyter Notebook here. And then this object can then be used as input or output to most functions that would expect a standard file object. So the best way to show this by a simple example. So here you see I imported string IO and then created an arbitrary string with some message that says this is just a normal string. Now what's interesting is then I can use string IO and then you use the dot string IO uh, method in order to create a file object out of a string. And we set that as the variable f and then you can actually perform like read and write so you can treat that object f just like you'd be able to treat a file. So you can say f.read, f.write, f.seek, all those things we learned back when we were dealing with um, files in Python in the very beginning of this course. So that's really all there is to it. You can basically just convert strings and be able to read and write to them as if they were files. So you can go ahead and check out the link here to the rest of the documentation. There's quite a few methods and there's also a faster C string IO which is just a C implementation of string IO which will be faster and it provides a similar interface just as string IO. So go ahead and check those out in case you ever need them in your code but I can't think of any examples for you as far as typical code usage. Usually when you just are using string IO it has to do with um, scraping from the web and trying to read uh, strings from the web as files. So that's where you'll see it come into play um, during your code. Okay, so that's it for String.io. I will go ahead and see you at the next lecture. Thanks everyone.